Okay, so welcome to, I guess, lesson number seven on compound interest. And here we're going to be talking about finding the number of terms. So in the previous lessons, we have talked about the compounding factor. So our compounding factor in this case. Okay, so this is right here. That's our compounding factor. We talked about trying to solve for the present value and future value. So you saw that in the previous videos and you can certainly watch them. But now what happens if you run into trying to solve for the number of terms and our number of terms? Okay, so in this case is right here. So what has happened in that particular case? Now, let's take a look at this example that I just gave you. So at 1mjourney.com, let's say an, an investment, so 7.2% compounded semi-annually was made for two and a half thousand dollars on March 20th. And it doesn't matter of what year it was. And let's say it asks us if the growth of the investment at maturity is to be 15,000, then how many years would it take? So notice that in this case, they actually provide us, okay, the initial, okay, investment. So that would be present value or the principal in this case. They tell us also what the future value or the maturity value would be right there. So we're not looking for either this and we're certainly not looking for this. It tells us that we want to find out how many years it would take, okay, so for this investment to grow. Now, we do have information on how it is being compounded right here, but, okay, it's not future value or present value that we're looking for. And this is a, a very legitimate question to ask. So if we would break this down, and if you've watched all the other videos, you know, we can certainly start this off exactly in the same way. So I could say, all right, so given and recall, I always like to say, okay, so how are we compounding? So how many terms do we have in a year? So this is semi-annually, so that would be two, okay? So that's from right here. Then I simply say, all right, so what is N? Now remember, N is the number of years that we have uh, multiplied by M. Now I don't know that because they're asking me, okay, to find out how many years it is. Okay, so this is now a little bit different of a question. Okay, so the next item that I would look for is, okay, my nominal interest rate. So in this case, it's 7.2%. So I have 7.2%. You, you can certainly change that back into decimal. Okay, so I'm going to do that there. And then my term rate or my compounding term rate is in this case, so 0 0.072, and then divided by K2, because okay, we are right there, it's semi-annually. So I have all of this information, and on top of that, they provide me my present value, so present value is 2,500, and then they also provide me my future value. Okay, so my future value is supposed to be 15,000. So I have all of this information, but I do not have N, right? And moreover, I'm not just interested in N, I am actually interested in the number of years, okay, for this investment. So how do we tackle this? Now, the easiest way to do it, because we have all of this particular information, uh, you can just simply input all of this into a business calculator, which works it out for you Okay, and it has the formulas integrated into the calculator. And so I'm going to provide a link for that so you can see that. And again, if you're going on into business, um, it's a worthy investment to make. Okay, so take a look at the you know business calculators. I have the BA2 Plus, and that's what I use. And I did do a full out video okay, on how to input, let's say, data that you see right here on the screen and then it just will spit out for you N, okay? And then you can turn it back into years, all right? So I'm gonna do that link. Now, what if you don't have it, okay? And we still don't wanna just kind of look behind and have a black box, okay? And then put it into calculator and 
not actually know what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this formula, okay, so that we have right here, and I'm going to show you how would we, okay, without a business calculator, let's say per se, okay, how do we solve for this? So I'm going to kind of derive it for you, and you do need to know a little bit about logs or, okay, lawn. Okay, so here comes kind of the derivation of a formula for n. Okay, so if we are given this future value, so future value is equal to present value, 1 plus i to the power of n, and my ultimate goal will be I want to be able to isolate for this n, which is really an exponent. So my first item, so this one probably won't be that hard to understand, okay, is that since I am isolating for that n, what I will do first is I'm going to divide both sides, okay, so by the present value, so that I cancel that present value, okay, so this present value will just simply cancel from there, all right? So now what I have is I'm going to rewrite this, okay, so I have future value over present value is equal to now 1 plus i to the n, okay, so this is what I have. And now here comes the, the problem because we do have our n in the exponent. And this is where you do need to know a little bit about logs and how they work in terms of isolating. Okay, so in order to bring down okay, an exponent, okay, that's an unknown, you can do that by taking the log or the lawn of both sides of the equation. Okay, so we have two kind of functions. Okay, so we have the logarithm function and then the ln function, so ln. Both of them are logarithm functions except they have a different base. All right, so typically on your calculator, as you will see, and I'm going to show you, okay, so this and this you can find on your scientific calculator and you can even find ln on your business calculator. Okay, and they have a certain base. Okay, so if I want, again, to get rid of this n, I have to take the log okay, of both sides. So and I'm going to do that. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay? So I'm going to say log okay, of this side right here. So I'm going to paste it back. Okay? So I'm going to take the log of that. And because I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. All right, so I'm going to take the log of the right-hand side as well, and that will be log of 1 plus i to the n. Now, when we do this, okay, so the um, property of logs is that your exponent that you have whenever you're taking a log of, a, uh, of anything is that this exponent is the same thing and it can drop off in front, meaning that it is removed from the exponent. So what you have now okay, is the following. So you have now log future value over present value is equal to n, so that n just drops in front, okay, and then we have log of 1 plus i. Okay? Now, because we want to be able to solve for n, then what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to divide both sides, okay, by log of 1 plus i, so that this cancels out, and all I will have is n, which is what I'm trying to solve for. And again, remember, I have to do that to both sides here, okay, log of 1 plus i. And that basically provides me the equation now for n, which is the number of terms. So if I kind of rewrite this, okay, so this would be n, okay, so n is equal to, is equal to, I'm, I'm writing it from left to right here, it is equal to the log of the future value divided by the present value. Okay, I'll put that in brackets. And all over log of 1 plus i. And that is the formula that we actually need, okay, in order to solve for n. So 
If you are only working with a scientific calculator, you're going to have to be comfortable in inputting this formula into your calculator. Now, if you're working with a business calculator, then it does it for you by just simply asking you for the future value, the present value, okay, and I, and then it computes your N for you. And that's what I mean in terms of investing in a business calculator. It certainly is worth it. But I will show you here how we can use that. For general terms, for anybody who's in business, at the end of the day, right, you kind of look up the formulas and you use them on the go, right? So not many people will actually remember how to derive. So what I just did right here for you, they won't remember this derivation unless you're kind of interested in math. And I mean, I love this stuff so I'm happy to try to share it okay so here is our formula let's now take a look and see how we would apply it all right to this particular question and now before I start applying it so I'm gonna kind of copy it down because this is my information that I need so I'm gonna copy it so I can use it um, I do want to let you know is that some calculators you know they may not have necessarily a log and instead okay so both of these you can use either log okay right here or you can use lawn right so you can use either or so you can rewrite this formula if you like it's exactly the same thing by simply using lawn which is lawn of future value present value divided by lawn of one plus i now the details why these logs and lawns work okay are a little bit beyond you know just the business component of compound interest all right so if someone is really interested I guess you can leave a note at some point or a comment and i can try to make okay some sense of it down the line all right so for this example okay so i said that we have Okay, so this information here, so let me just paste it, okay, so for us. So that was our information, okay, and let's see how we would input this in. So we're solving for N, and in particular, the number of years. All right, so we have, okay, I'm going to take out the calculator here, okay, and I'm going to do it right there. Now, if you have your calculator, this is the other problem because scientific calculators, there's so many different variations. So I can't honestly even tell you how to input it because it will depend on your calculator. Okay, but what I have done is, you know, here's an image of a scientific calculator and I just wanted to point out for you. Okay, so notice that on this calculator, you know, you can see log and lawn right here. So those are the buttons that you would be using, okay, in order to input it in. But you have to practice and see how to do it because every calculator is different. It may not look like this. It may look something else, but those are your buttons. So here for this example, okay, so I have a lawn. Okay, so notice, okay, so I have it right there. Okay, so here's my lawn. Okay, so, and I'm now going to input in, okay, all the information. So it says, all right, so future value divided by present value. So my future value, okay, divided by my present value. All right, so that is what I have, okay. So that is the, as you can see there on top, that is my uh, numerator you know I mean I can hit equals okay and this is what that is now this is kind of irrelevant to us at the moment but we still have to divide so I have to take this answer and then divide it again by lawn so I have lawn and then it's one plus I right so I'm gonna input that in so one plus notice it keeps it in brackets and I is 0 0.072 divided by 2 all right, so and it's all in brackets. So now I'm going to hit equals, okay, and I get 50.6616 and, and so on. Okay, so let me put that in. So my answer to N, okay, was 50.66169. Okay, so 50.66169 and so on. Now, remember what this means. This is N. We were compounding, okay, so here, semi-annually. 
So this means that it's you know 50 point or approximately 50.7 semi-annual terms. That's what it means. This this isn't years. This is how many terms you have. Okay, so this was semi-annually. Semi-annually. Now, if it was monthly, if it was weekly, okay, then it this formula just tells you how many terms you have. It doesn't tell you how many years. Now, in our original question, okay, so you may recall, it asks us, okay, how many years? So they weren't asking us for N, they were asking us for how many years we have. But, okay, the formula for N is equal to number of years multiplied by M. So if you want to solve for the number of years, okay, if you want to solve this formula, notice we can rearrange it by just simply multiplying both sides by M, like so so that this M cancels here, and that now tells you that the number of years is equal to N divided by M. So for our situation, we have 50 point, whatever that is, 6, 6, and so on. I still have it stored in the calculator there. So that divided by M, which is 2. So if it was monthly, you would divide by 12. If it was quarterly, you would divide by four, right? Whatever you would be doing there. So now this basically tells us this is approximately 25.3 years, all right? So that's how long it would take at this particular, okay, 7.2% compounded semi-annually term. So 25.3 years in total, all right? So these examples do happen you know, if you've watched all the previous lessons on the compound, this is probably the ugliest formula that you have in compounding. Um, you know, the nice thing is once you kind of take care of it, um, try it several times, it is just inputting it into the calculator. That's a little bit annoying. But the setup of the problems is the same, right? So we set it up in this way, and then we just input it into our formula and solve, or you input it into your business calculator. All right, so this was a lesson okay, on finding the number of terms, okay, and here was an example that you had. Thank you for watching, everybody.